I, I think that there's um, sort of a persistent cadence throughout human evolution. Um, I've done a lot of research looking back at moments of cataclysmic change. Mm -hmm. And um, the patterns tend to be the same. There's sort of disbelief, uh, the willful ignorance, um, followed by uh, ex not acceptance, but like awareness of what's happening, and then fear. Um, and my concern is that the cycles of change are happening very fast. And to David's wonderful points earlier, we're losing sight of things like spirituality and nature, the kinds of things that I think we're starting to abandon, which I think is maybe a mistake, and um, that, that we will feel unsettled. And I don't think it needs to feel that way, mm. but, but technology and science are changing so much faster than our willingness to be okay with uncertainty and to question and contemplate um, what's happening that I, I worry we're all gonna feel a little discombobulated and that is gonna be okay for some people and for other people it's, it's really not gonna be okay. So l let's make it a goal to work tonight to try to make people leave feeling slightly less discombobulated if possible. I, I would like for people to leave feeling like it's okay to be a little uncomfortable not knowing what's ahead or not being certain. Um, you know, uncertainty isn't, isn't a substitute for, certainty isn't a substitute for confidence. Um, you know, if you were completely certain all the time, that's, 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 a, that's a problem, I think, right? Uh, so it's okay to be uncertain. It's okay to sit with feelings of a little bit of anxiety and being open to new information, new data, um, and to be sort of more agile. But it takes work, and not everybody's willing to to do that, but you do with yoga. I mean, I, that's got to be something you think yes. about a lot. Yeah, we were talking backstage about about yoga. My whole last several years has all been uh, about running a yoga business with my wife, not necessarily doing this sort of thing. I'll, I'll tell you, it helps. That's one thing that we should do more <laughs> of in the future. Um, David, how about you? And what is what does the future look like, feel like for you? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I, I think is hopefully got across as well in, in part of my talk. Um, the feeling that I hope that we have in the, in the future in 20 years is one where we as individuals and collectively as society or you know, in, within your family, your neighborhood, where you feel like you have agency, you feel like you actually have some ability to shape what is happening, right? Um, to me, I think we're living in this age and in this historical moment right now where there's just a massive feeling of disempowerment, right? There's all of these things happening to us and that somehow we've lost our ability to, to really you know, help to shape whatever is gonna happen. And so in a way, um, you know, how is it all gonna look? Um, there's a lot of ways it could go. I, I agree with Amy, if you really wanna be very rational and kind of map it out and do some math and look at the numbers, um, uh, you know, apocalyptic hellscape, um, that's definitely um, a likely thing. That's one thing that's probably, probably uh, you know, we're gonna have to deal with aspects of that for sure. Um, you know, the way climate change is, is moving and our inability to, to really address it in a meaningful way. That said, you know, I, I am hopeful about a, a few different things. You know, earlier we had a couple of young people here um, as a part of the the, uh, uh, the forum, and I think they're in the audience today. So, so I know for me already, that's been one of the most inspiring things is meeting some of the young people. Um, but I do think that you know, two years of pandemic um, are are kind of um, to to Amy's whole uh, question around reperception. Re I think we are reperceiving all and requestioning in a very healthy way so many aspects of our our current lives. Why are we working the way we work? You know, so many people that had certain jobs that were very, um, that didn't have a lot of meaning. I think that's, a, for me, another big question about the future. Can we be doing more meaningful work? Can we actually, in our daily lives, feel like the job that I'm going to every day is something that gives me a feeling of purpose, right? That's something I certainly hope for a lot. And, you know, we're, we're in a critical moment where I think we can start making some decisions um, collectively and as individuals to help moving in those directions. So, um, and, and one, one thing I will say about, about nature as well, I, I don't know for folks here, but you know, I, we were chatting about this earlier, I discovered during the pandemic like this amazing conservation land that's like a five minute walk from my house that I never went to, that all of a sudden you know, became just a part of my ritual to be outside and to just spend time with, with, uh, with the trees and just you know, be there. And um, you know, I, I think there's the metaverse and moving towards digital and, and all of this work that's happening at MIT and other places. Um, but I think physical reality and being able to really be, um, you know, expand our own consciousness and our connection with nature, I think is a huge part of what can hopefully guide us towards a more just and flourishing future.